It was recently brought to my attention by a close friend of mine that there's a lot of videos online uh, of people testing the pH levels of their water. Uh, the fears being that um, water with a pH lower than 7, so a more acidic water, um, or anything more acidic, a more acidic diet in general, is bad for you. And what they were trying to show is that um, a lot of bottled water out there from certain brands isn't actually neutral at pH 7, um, like they advertise, but is in fact a lot more acidic. Now, the human body naturally is about 7.3 to 7.6 in pH level, um, so we're a little bit more alkaline in nature. Um, and it's recommended that a, a slightly more alkaline diet is more beneficial for your health. And it has been debated quite a lot whether or not um, having a more acidic water is bad for you. Um, but it goes without saying that having a high level and concentration of more acidic foods in your system at a more constant rate will have an adverse effect on your health. Um, and it goes to that saying too that having constantly high alkaline levels too would be a negative and have its problems. Now it's time to go on a bit of a nostalgia trip and go back to high school chemistry lessons and do a bit of practical science today. I've bought myself some litmus paper test strips. Um, I got them online for about £2. That was including with postage. And what we're going to do is test... Um, Nine brands, eight of them are sealed, but one of them, which I left in my car overnight, is slightly open. Uh, so that one will uh, think twice about what the results are. It may have oxidised and as a result can make the water more acidic if it already was predispositioned to be slightly more acidic. Um, but the, all the others are sealed. I bought them today. Fairly cheap. Water's quite cheap here. I don't know, it cost about £7 to get all these bottles of water. And I've got some of the main brands, as you can see here, we have Volvic, um, quite a popular brand, quite a high name brand, a lot of adverts on television, has a lot of uh, funding for advertising. Uh, Buxton, again, something similar, and Evian, quite well-known brands of waters. And, of course, we have Smart Water. Uh, this one claims to have electrolytes. I think that's what makes it so special. <laughs> If, you ever, if you've ever seen Idiocracy, it's um, kind of funny. However, getting back on point, let's read this. Uh, inspired by clouds, clean, crisp taste. Sometimes the answer is right under your nose, and other times it's floating above your head. Well, that sounds ominous. In our case, it was the humble cloud that got us thinking. Inspired by water cycles... We vapour distill our spring water and then add electrolytes to deliver a distinct, clean, crisp taste. Smart, because it's made that way. Um, okay. Well, we'll see if it lives up to its name soon enough. And does it have a pH on here to just uh, um, to tell us what it is? No, never mind. So there's some of the main ones, they're quite popular brands, something I can get from my store. Most stores in England will sell these four bottles of water. Um, and then we have some slightly cheaper ones here. We have Highland Spring, um, again, quite a common, just cheap bottle of water, but it is its own brand. And then we have Sainsbury's own water here. Uh, this the cheap stuff they have themselves from um, Campsie Fells. It's Caledonian water from Scotland, I believe, yeah. Uh, Scottish water. So, here we have Spa Zone water as well. Uh, Silverbrook Falls. Not much information there at all. Um, it does say the pH is 7.93, so about 8. So we'll see if it lives up to that. That means it should be green, if I remember correctly. And here we have Aldi's own cheap water. And this one is... 
a high pH source as well. Uh, 7.8 is the promise on this one. So we'll see if that lives up to its expectations. And this is Nestle water. Now this one did have quite a bad result on all the other tests I've seen online. It came up red most of the time. Uh, like I said, this has been in my car for a day or two. I've had a little bit out of it, as you can see. Um, so we'll test it anyway and see what it says. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put a piece of masking tape at the top of each of these strips that I'll use to test. The reason being I don't want to touch the litmus paper because the moisture on my fingers will affect the results. So this strip is effectively useless now and we'll just get rid of that. Um, what I'll do is I'll stick them on top of the bottle caps as well. The reason being is I don't want them to touch anything and have the moisture absorbed out of the strips while they're drying to affect the results. Um, I'm going to speed through this process now. You'll see me open each individual cap so you know this is uh, genuine. And you'll see me stick them on top of the lids. And then we'll show the results afterwards and I'll note down the pH. And we'll compare them on this little scale here. Right, so let's check out the results. See if I can uh, get this here. And we'll lift it up. And Volvic comes in at around about, I'd say, an eight. That's quite an impressive uh, amount, that's good. So it's more alkaline, which is good for us. It's like Volvic passed the litmus test here. Now if we go into Buxton Water, and we check out this one, I think we can see that too. It's a little bit darker, I'd say it's more there, which is on a 9 on the pH level, so a lot more alkaline. Um, I'm pretty sure at those levels, it's actually becoming bad for you, but I could be wrong. Um, I believe it needs to be between 6.5 to 8.5 to be healthy, and if it's on a 9 on the scale, that's cause for worry, I think. However... A small amount of alkaline probably would do you some good if you always have an acidic diet, so nothing wrong there, I suppose. If we go to Evian, again, quite a dark green. I'd say 
closer to six, uh, sorry, closer to eight, should I say, and nine. So I would say it's somewhere in between, so we say about an 8.5. So Evian again, those top three sellers, I'd say are quite good. Um, there's no problem there. Um, I've seen some bad results on from other sources. I don't really know where this water's come from. The bottle can tell you anything, but we all know the truth is rarely what these companies tell us. But as it goes from now, I can tell that uh, these are good things for me to drink. Um, out of the three, it looks like Evian comes in at the uh, best there with the most boulder green and the most persistent as well, as it seems. Now, if we come here to the smart water, it looks like the electrolytes didn't uh, really do much for the water. It looks like we're at a seven. I'd say it's on seven. And maybe, yeah, we'll say seven. So it's right in the middle. Um, however, I'd say we need a slightly more alkaline uh, beverage for it to be a match with our own body pH levels. So it's like the smart water falls short out of all of them. Because as you can see here with the results of the rest, they are all falling in within the range of 8, 7 and 9. The slightly more alkaline, including the Nestle water. So as a result, the tests don't lie. I can say my water in my local area in Preston in the northwest is alright. And if I had a choice... I guess I'll be going for Evian from now on through my own research first hand I can safely say this is probably the best for you if I go to the spa to buy these bottles that is obviously now with this uh, handy little cheap pH tester I can test any drink I have um, quickly just to see what's going on there and if it's in the red I know there's a problem so to finish up and in conclusion, um, you should all do your own tests on this. Like I said, it's really cheap. It, it literally costs pennies to buy these strips. And uh, you're really just paying for the postage. And once you've got them, you, you have a hundred. So you're not really going to run out anytime soon. And you can just test your water as and when. But of course, you can test other things. Um, let's not forget Coca-Cola and its contents of phosphoric acid which is uh, blurry on here, but it's just under my thumb. And if I pour a glass here quickly. And we get our test strip. We can see that's going red pretty quickly. I know that's not the colour of the Coke dye doing that. That's actually the ID on the litmus paper turning red. Proving that, you know... This, this stuff does work. Now, I haven't found many products. I tried to find a product that was alkaline that I could uh, quickly just uh, dip there to get one blue for you, but I think I spent enough money doing this test so far, and I hope you enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. You can see the link to the website here. And uh, take it easy, guys. I'll speak to you soon.